Hey, what's up guys, this is Atark here, and uh, let me introduce you to the Zwift Play. These are new additions to the Zwift family that they just announced, and what we have here is a pair of game controllers tailor-made for Zwift. They are basically your new best friend for interacting with the game, a steering and braking to dropping those right on bombs. The controllers attach right onto your bike's handlebar, the left one, that's got a directional pad for getting you around the game and navigation. The right one is full of shortcuts buttons for all your favorite in-game actions, and I will dive into all the details soon. So let's take a look at what comes in the box. Uh, the Zwift Play come in a compact box, and you've got the two controllers and a USB to dual USB-C cable for charging them up. There are also a couple of optional shims in case you've got different handlebars and a Zwift sticker, which is the most important thing. Now. Getting the controllers onto your handlebar is a breeze. All you need to do is strap the lift controllers onto your left handlebar using the silicon strap and repeat that same for the right one. Unfortunately, if you have a triathlon bike or a TT bike, you're not going to be able to use these controllers. Uh, there is no workable way to get them installed properly so you can use them. To get them connected with Zwift, just pop over to the pairing menu, start pairing your bike trainer, and then look for the steering option in the center. Make sure to power on your controllers by pressing the Z button on each of them. When you open the steering in the pairing menu, you should be able to select both controllers. Once they are paired, you will be able to see the battery levels, and if there's a firmware update available, you will get a heads up. And speaking of battery, Zwift claims 20 hours of battery life depending on use, which should give you about 20 rides or so before needing to recharge them. Now, there's something Apple TV users need to keep in mind. Each Zwift Play controllers operate on its own Bluetooth channel. That means due to the limited Bluetooth connections on Apple TV devices, you will need to use the Zwift Companion app as a bridge. So, if you are on an Apple TV, you'll get a prompt saying you are out of Bluetooth channels and advising you to the to or and advising you to use the Zwift Companion app. Just agree to the pop-up message open the companion app on your phone and run through the pairing process again on your Apple TV and you should be good to go. Now, when you pair the controllers for the very first time, Zwift takes you on a guided tour, which I must say is very well put together. It will take you through the basics of using the controllers and familiarizing you with the key functionalities. Zwift has also included a haptic feedback feature in these controllers, but do not get too excited just yet. It is not active, but they uh, plan to switch it on in a future update, so stay tuned for that. All right, so what can these Zwift Play controllers actually do? Well, they've got four main areas of functionalities, navigation, steering, and braking, social interaction, and some workout functionalities. The controllers let you navigate the action bar. Pressing the arrow up button brings up the action bar and navigate and select different actions. Pressing the A button will select the action you want. They can also be used at intersections. The left, right, and up arrow on the directional pad can be used to make a left, right, or go straight. Next, they give you the power to brake and steer in the game. Simply push the paddle inward to apply brakes and pull outward on the right one to steer right and left on the left controllers to steer left. I must say, I found the steering to be pretty good and precise. They also reintroduced a repack ridge, if you remember that little off-road route from a few years ago. The new route is called Repack Rush, which is like a game with the aim to practice steering. Your goal is to finish as fast as possible. The hovering clocks icons reduce your final time. Uh, meanwhile, if you hit the boost on the roads, you'll go faster while the red things slow you down. The controllers also let you spread some Zwift love by giving out those right on uh, bombs by pressing and holding the Z button. The last but not least, they got functionalities for your workout and erg mode, basically increase and decrease workout intensity, and that's about it. But speaking of functionalities, some buttons serve specific function depending on the mode you are in. So let's say you are in a free ride mode and you hold down the back arrow button, your avatar will pull a U-turn. But if you are in an event mode like a race or a group ride, that same back button will give you a view of what is happening behind you. 
and in workout mode the left and right side buttons will increase decrease workout resistance would have liked to see the ability to toggle erg mode on and off as well as increasing and decreasing trainer resistance when erg mode is turned off but i'm sure we'll see different features and functionalities added as Zwift get the uh, Zwift Play controllers to users and gather users feedback. Now let's talk dollars and cents. As of now, the Zwift Play is in its beta phase and during this period, Zwift is offering it at a discounted price of 99 US dollars. However, once it moves past the beta stage, which we have no idea how long that beta stage is going to last, the price is slated to increase to 149 US dollars. That is pretty hefty price tag if you ask me. Uh, I feel like that $99 is a more reasonable amount. It will be interesting to see whether Zwift stick to their planned price increase or decide to keep it at the more affordable $99 mark. Overall, I've got to say, I am pretty impressed with what Zwift has done here. This is their second hardware launch in the past year, but the first time they've designed and produced a piece entirely on their own it is a big move by Zwift and it shows their commitment to improving their user experience and hardware ambition. Now, Zwift has been pushing for more interaction with the action bar. And according to their data, only 15% of Zwifters have been using it. But when they looked a little deeper into their data, they saw a clear pattern. Zwifters who use the touchscreen devices like an iPad are three times more likely to use the action bar than those on a Mac or a PC. And those who interact with Zwift through the companion app tend to ride two to three times more each month than those who do not. And that basically told them users are much more engaged when the controls are easily accessible. And that is exactly what Zwift Plays aims to do. It is about making that platform more interactive and engaging. And uh, we'll see how all this plays out. It's definitely a step in the right direction. And I'm looking forward to seeing how Zwift continues to evolve these. Now, over to you. What are your thoughts on the Zwift Play? Is this something you would want to add to your setup? Are there any features you wish Zwift has incorporated? Let's get a conversation going in the comments uh, below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. And do not forget to tap the like button. And if you are still watching but haven't subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next video.